Happy there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and in this video, we're going to add more functionality in our application so that we can access this application using the browser. We have done it in the previous section as well. We take the help of express in that pretty much very standard command. But I totally agree if you're not from the node world or the JavaScript world, it can be a little bit tricky for you. You might be coming up from a Python background or a Ruby on Rails or anything else. But it's not going to be too much. I'll still try to keep everything as minimal as possible. But of course, we need a project to work on with. And we need some kind of projects. So obviously, choosing node was really a tough decision. I could have gone for JavaScript world or the Python world or Ruby world other world definitely would be complaining. So I thought, hey, let's just go with that. So tough decision, but we have to make it. So in this video, we are going to just write a very simple code using the express to access this application using browser. Now, one more side note, the Docker Compose world is little bit, not little bit, like really, really in depth. What we are seeing up here in the Docker Compose file is really the bare minimum basic absolutely just scratching the surface of the Docker Compose. It has a lot of port option, a lot of default command option, a lot of execution command option, a lot of option regarding what happens when the things crashes, a lot of options like dependencies, like what container is dependent on what container, and a whole bunch of other things. I will definitely try that in the future I write a blog on my website, blog.learncodeonline.in or maybe include some kind of cheat sheet or something so that you can explore it more. And probably in the future videos, I will try to cover some more scenarios of it. But right now this is enough. And I know this is not really a justification for the Docker Compose. I will try to include more in the future videos, but definitely keep an eye on our blog. I will probably post up a cheat sheet in the future. Not as of now, I want to focus on videos as of now. So let's go on to first and foremost, the terminal. We are going to kill this up and we're gonna just clean that as well. So I can see that my package.json file is here, so I can install any dependency up here. So I can simply say npm install, and we are going to just use express. We have previously used the express as well. This is gonna be an exact repetition of what we have seen in the past as well. So within a few videos, you are actually able to handle the express. It's a really detailed stuff, but right now it's okay. So we go to the index and we are going to call the express now. So we're gonna simply say const express is gonna be simply uh, requiring the express, not events, uh, express, there we go. Now what we have to do is create simply a variable, kind of an instance of express. So we're gonna simply say app is gonna be uh, express, there we go. Now we can use this app to listen anywhere and no matter where you put the database stuff and everything, it doesn't really matter. We can put it afterwards as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case, but keeping the database stuff at the top is actually better. So uh, we are gonna simply say app and this app is gonna have a get request. Again, we have seen this in the past as well. The get request is gonna be on the slash root or kind of a home page, And then we fire up a callback function. You might be getting familiar with the JavaScript world. Okay, so in this, we get a request and a response. And we're gonna throw back something. We're gonna simply say on the response side, I want to throw up a JSON, which is gonna be simply having a message that says uh, you are, not visiting, <laughs> uh, visiting root route. There we go, nothing much, nothing much, just basic. But we have to also listen on some port so that these messages are being served there. So we're gonna simply say app.listen. And again, we can just mention in the listen the URL that is actually the compulsory part. So we can simply say 8,000. But just for fun, I would like to throw back a callback one more time here to just put up a message. Again, it is not compulsory, but I like to have it. So this is my callback. Okay. And this callback is going to be based on nothing at all. It's going to be always called. And we're going to simply have a con console.log. And we are going to say uh, 8000 is ready to serve and dot, 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 just for fun. 
So save that and now application is ready to be visited from the browser as well. I know I was just cruising through over it, but since we have already discussed it, that's why I didn't spend much of the time on it. We have already seen that in the previous section. Let's go on to the terminal again one more time and all we want to do here is run this command again, which is docker compose up dash dash build. We're gonna hit enter. We should be able to see still the database connected. Uh, it's gonna not gonna be using the cache again because we have made some changes up here. So that should be all fine. And MongoDB is already up. So as we can see, DB connected, so still successful. Let's go on to the browser and we should be able to see that. So localhost, not 3000, 8000 this time. We're gonna hit enter and there we go. You are visiting root route. So there we go. Finally, we have, we can actually close this section now. Let me just give you a quick revision here. It's necessary. We have first created an application, an amazing application which just connects to the database and prints a message. That's a kind of our startup application. Then we have learned about the Compose and through the Compose, we have seen that how we can connect or create an instance of MongoDB, a container. It can be a container of not just MongoDB, probably Redis database, probably MySQL or Postgre, whatever you want. Docker Compose helps us to get an internal connection between the two applications, so it does it automatically for us. The only thing to keep in mind while having the connection is the name of the container itself. The naming part is absolutely necessary to make those connection. And after that, in the node, we have taken the example taken the help of Mongoose to get connected with the MongoDB, but again, there are other ORMs to get connected with MySQL, Redis, or anything else as well. Using this MyNode application, we have taken the help of Express so that we can actually create a port from the outside world on the port 8000, but it can be anything as well. And then finally, through this lovely user, we were able to visit the route which is the root route and we were able to see our custom message there which is uh, you are visiting the root route. Again, this can be far more complex application with a login form, sign up form and everything. But for that, we have to move on into the node based application which is already there on my website, Learn Code Online, a pretty detailed course on the node. But that's for another day. I think we're gonna close down this section just right here. It was an amazing section. We learned so much about the Docker Compose. Again, keep an eye on our blog or future videos on my channel. I will post out a cheat sheet or something. I, in case I'm not able to post that out in like few months, just notify me on the Instagram. Sometimes I forget. That's it for this video. I hope you have subscribed to my channel and you have already given a like to this video. I think it deserves it. And we're gonna catch up in the next section or the next video.